and mm -hmm. um, and we'll get started. So, uh, Jody, can you um, just say your name for me so I can get the pronunciation right? Sure, it's uh, Jody Gangloff Kaufman. And and what would your title be? I'm an entomologist at the New York State IPM program. Fantastic. So, um, starting to see this. Uh, you know, the term uh, cicada, 17 year cicada, locust, these, uh, you know, words getting kind of thrown around and where it's going to be. So can we kind of start off um, just a little bit with, you know, what is the cicada? How long has it been around? And, and then maybe a little bit more about the 17 year cycle that we see. Okay. Well, um, a cicada is not is different from a locust. A locust would be a grasshopper and a cicada is a type of, um, Homoptera, kind of related to aphids and stink bugs in a bigger group, uh, Hemiptera, Homoptera. Um, and they are uh, more tropical, you know, in the, in the world. Uh, there are a lot of different species in the tropics, but we have um, a few different species here in North America. And people are likely to see them every year because there's a different species that is annual. And what we're going to see here in uh, the Northeast and the, you know, North Central region is this emergence of a 17 year cicada, which is um, what we call, well, this year will be brood 10 or brood X. Mm -hmm. And um, it's phenomenal because they only emerge, this group will only emerge every 17 years. There are other groups that emerge on 11 year cycles and on 13 year cycles. And what those numbers have in common is that they are prime numbers. So they cannot easily be replicated um, by other you know, organisms that might, for example, prey on them. Interesting. And, and so that's kind of like um, an evolutionary thing that they pick these these strange numbers to come back every year to avoid predators. Yeah, I mean, I think they didn't pick it so much as they um, they developed it as a response to predation. You know, cicadas don't have a lot of defenses, so they are among the most favored foods of many animals, you know, birds and um, mammals and stuff. So uh, and also other insects. So they can, um, if they can, what's called masting in, in plant terms, you have a year where an oak tree will, all the oak trees in an area will produce such a huge crop of acorns and that's called masting. And so insects do it you know, to some extent as well. Uh, if you flood the area with your progeny, <laughs> some will survive. And um, you know, it's, it's a phenomenon because it's so you know, distinct and it's on this strange cycle and there are different groups that are in geographic areas different, you know, every year. Um, there are, I don't know, 15 different broods, you know, with Roman numeral, numerals uh, for their identity, but they, uh, they emerge in different times and space. So they're essentially like reproductively separated. So they're different. Interesting. And so, so there are different broods for different years or is it usually kind of every 17 years we see this? Well, every 17 years we will see brood 10, but like in 2013, New York State saw brood um, six, I think it was, or brood two, no, it was brood two. And uh, that was in like Westchester County. We have photographs on our, on our Flickr website where, um, you know, there are hundreds of them in the landscape and dozens on a branch. So um, brood two was pretty phenomenal for New York and brood 10 doesn't look like it will be phenomenal for New York. It'll be great in Indiana and Pennsylvania and Maryland, but um, we have only a few locations uh, in the, you know, north, northeast, and Long Island has a small area where um, they have been spotted, but the last time they were spotted and it was recorded was 1987, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. probably the furthest north might be Long Island, but likely probably Pennsylvania if you wanted to go see these, I guess, for example. Yeah, yeah, and the people who live there will um, start um, complaining of the noise and the, you know, the abundance of these big bumbling insects around, um, but they're harmless. I think I need to stress that they are truly harmless. They're noisy, uh, but they last only a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? Uh, one week, two weeks usually, or? Oh, it's probably a good month or a month and a half, maybe a total of four or six weeks. But, uh, and that's because they'll emerge over a period of time, maybe a week, depending on temperatures. Um, but by the time you have a peak, it can be extremely loud. <laughs> right. Do they do any damage to um, like other plants? Well, what they do is 
they emerge, they don't feed, but they do find mates. And then the females will lay their eggs in the tips of the branches on trees. So what you end up seeing in a high population is um, flagging or like as if the branch was broken and turns brown at the tip, you know, the, maybe the end piece. Um, does that harm trees? Not really, it's a sort of pruning in a sense. And when that thing, when that branch falls down, the, um, the nymphs will hatch out of those eggs and go right into the ground. And for that 17 years, they'll feed on the roots of those trees and other, you know, woody trees around. Uh, and, but that doesn't do much damage either because their life cycle is so long, they feed and grow very slowly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay, I think that's that's pretty good. They emerge, as you said, it kind of depends on temperatures, but usually like late April time frame. Uh, in the southernmost regions where they're going to be emerging, which is southern Indiana and um, below that, we they'll probably start seeing them, I think someone said March, but it really depends on how warm a spring we have. Um, here where I am, I never really see cicadas until about May or June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, along with cicadas, you'll get a number of cicada killer wasps, which are another phenomenon of their own. <laughs> <laughs> and they're among the biggest wasps we have in the Northeast, but I like to stress to people that they're also harmless and they're just taking advantage of the uh, large bodied insects that they can feed to their young. Mm -hmm. Is the, is brood X one of the bigger broods uh, that you see when you, I'm sure you can probably compare those different types? Yeah, it is among, because it has a really wide range in the central North, you know, North central regions of that Indiana um, maybe into Michigan. And then there's an, a population in um, south, Southern Pennsylvania and West Virginia and stuff. And those are really widespread areas. So they do see a lot of them there, but there are other broods that are impressive as well. Cool. Um, I think that's, that's pretty good for me. Is there anything else you might want to add? Um, I don't know. You might want to look up the University of Connecticut's uh, cicada page. They okay. Good um, you know, database on cicada emergence. Right, sure, and um, they do. They there's probably a map I can find of where we can expect yes. the ones in 2021. That's true. They have. Um, if you look up cicada mania, that website doesn't exist, but it redirects to the maps and the history and the um, the self-reporting that people do for cicadas. So that's a really good resource. Great. Okay. Uh, well, Jody, thank you very much for uh, taking the time, and I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thanks for. Ask me. <laughs> All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.